Hey guys, this is Joe with That Hashtag Show, and I'm here to talk to you today about Hacktivist Volume 2 from Boom Studios and Arkea Entertainment. The team behind the critically acclaimed miniseries Hacktivist is back, as actress and activist Alyssa Milano teams up with writers Jackson Lansing, Colin Kelly, and artist Marcus Two once again for this next installment of High Stakes Danger in the hacker community. Hacktivist is based around the global adventures of fictional characters Nate Graff and Ed Hickox, who run a successful social media company, Your Life, which is like Twitter. They also happen to be hackers with a group modeled off of Anonymous called Save Yourself. I caught up with the writing team Colin Kelly, Jackson Lansing, and Alyssa Milano at the Comic Bug in Manhattan Beach to talk about Hacktivist Volume 2 and social media change in general. Hi, this is Joe with that hashtag show. We are here at the Comic Bug in Manhattan Beach for the release of the Hacktivist Volume 2. How are you guys doing? Awesome. We're doing great. I'm we the, are so proud. Oh, yeah. I'm here with the creators of the Hacktivist, Alyssa Milano, Colin Kelly, and Jackson Lansing. Is that correct? Did I say that right? Perfect. Um, quick question. I'm going to jump right into this. I know, Alyssa, that uh, you have this fascination with Anonymous, the uh, internet activist group. How did that transition into the story for the Hacktivist, Volume 1 or 2? Well, I've, I've had a, 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 a love relationship with social media, I think, ever since the uprising in, in, our, in Iran, the Arab yep. uprising. And the protests in Iran really opened my eyes to how powerful a tool that uh, social media can be. Right. And it kind of levels the playing field. It gives everyone a voice to create movements. You know, it used to be if you wanted to create a movement, you had to have a leader. And that, you know, sort of uh, movement had to then trickle down to the people. Now the people can start the movement. Which is awesome. And it just becomes, you know, the masses. Um, and that kind of spawned uh, this fascination with Anonymous and, and their hacktivism. And, and I, I thought, I had this crazy thought, which was, what if any of these guys, these brilliant uh, CEOs, of any of these incredible companies like Twitter, or Facebook, or Periscope, or any of them, actually created these social media companies as a front right. to their hacktivism. So really, the story is kind of like, what if Jack Dorsey was a member of Anonymous? Which is what I was going to get to next. Colin, I actually want to ask you a question. Um, Jack Dorsey, now he's Thank the co-founder of Twitter, and I know that he was kind of the inspiration for one of the main protagonists in The Hacktivist. How did that come about? Well, it really was um, kind of, that was Alyssa's main touchstone. You know, he is the godfather of Alyssa's child. Um, and we did a lot of research, you know, there takes a certain kind of personality to start a kind of social network, a social media, you know, organization of that size. You got to be a little weird. You got to be a little kind of, um, you have to have a very no specific, no offense, not, not at all. You have to be brilliant. And to be brilliant, that necessarily kind of means that you have to have a very unique viewpoint. That gave us our in on these characters, Ed and Nate, who really became kind of the two pronged leads of our book. Two sides of one coin that together become one you know real positive force for change that's awesome Jackson they complete each other for they sure. do complete each other we don't know anything about this <laughs> <laughs> much like my 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 guys right here these two very similar they complete you to, no they complete each other oh they complete and each other guess, and you in right weird, in a weird way in a weird comic book yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Uh, Jackson I have a question for you sure. so uh, the word hacking just in general mainstream media kind of has a negative like connotation about sure. it um, and how do you use the positive spin on the word hacking and hacktivist oh yeah totally uh, do you want me to take this is that uh, no. okay okay awesome so uh, interestingly uh, I don't think we ever approach it from a negative standpoint point, I think um, when you look at what hacking actually means, um, and we were actually all having a conversation about this online, um, not last week, hacking isn't a recent phenomenon. Um, hacking in the way that we understand it as like a computer, you know, hacking, that is a recent phenomenon. But really all that means is finding flaws in a system and exploiting those flaws either to show that those flaws exist and to patch them up, or to show that those flaws exist and make change within those flaws, to blow it up. Like right? Edward Snowden. White, so our, our, our first volume is all about a hacker named Ed who right. discovers that he is part and parcel to some stuff that he really doesn't want to be, leaks government secrets, and has to flee the country. And we wrote it six months before Edward Snowden went to Glenn Greenwald. Wow. Um, that, like, the, the fun thing about this book is that every time that we come up with something where we're like, well, you know, I really wish someone would hack this. Wait, how'd you, how, did you guys know anything about nope. that? Wow, that was just 
That was literally coincidence. It, just, it felt like it was the next step of what was going to happen, Our right? Very- With WikiLeaks and, and Anonymous and everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. And we were so much, I mean, the, the word hacktivism to me means holding someone accountable. Right. Right? And it was just the next step. I felt that, that these documents or documents were going to be leaked in this time that we're in right now. Right, of course. And he was just the guy to brave just enough the, to the, do it. The fact that his name was Ed yeah, is that just, that's just weird. Well, what's really funny is that we went through about three names for that character along the way and changed them when we realized that they were the names of actual, like, you know, imprisoned oh, wow. hackers or activists. <laughs> and we're like, oh, well, we really don't want anybody to be like, oh, are you, you're, you're, you're profiting on the name of like Jeremy Hammond or any right, of these right. guys. And then, We'll do like a nice safe name like Ed. Yeah, Ed. <laughs> nice safe name like Ed. Here we go. And yeah. then um, you guys had a really yeah. brilliant viral marketing campaign where it seemed like your Twitter got hacked, Alyssa. I love that. Whose idea was that? <laughs> it was a collaboration, I think. I mean, something like this, a book like this, you have to look outside of the box for, right. for marketing, right? I mean, if we just went traditional marketing, I think that that would just be a little odd, right? Well, yeah, and a little boring as well, yeah, especially little, for that. Yeah, for this, for what for what we're trying to do. So it was, uh, I think a lot of it was Mel, actually, who came up with a team of people, of marketing people that came up with that idea, and we we did it, and it was it was fun. It was a fun way yeah. to, to launch into it, for sure. It was cool. Great yeah. little mini site that they coded. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. And uh, for volume one, you guys really scratched the surface on, like, social media change. What can we expect in, like, volume two? Volume two is, uh, so the first thing that we did when we sat down to start figuring out volume two, because we never thought we would have one, if I'm being super honest. We thought we had one volume, we had one story to tell, really? and we told it. And then when... And it was super important that that volume one stood on its own right. for that reason, because Absolutely. none of us really thought... Absolutely. But yeah. when the response was as positive as it was, and we were so gratified that people were willing to take that journey and wanted more from it, we all sat down um, and had a very, uh, I think, blunt conversation about what we could do to take this story and drive it home. Um, it, the first volume takes place primarily in Tunisia. It deals with uh, domestic events through a very foreign lens. Okay. Uh, and this time we decided to kind of take that lens off and just deal with the issues in front of us. And, so, And as we were kind of developing that idea, you know, we, we gotta, you gotta write what you know. You gotta write what you're passionate about. And as we were sitting, the three of us were sitting around watching the news, you know, our own country is so rife with so much inequality. We realized if we are telling a story about contemporary hack, um, you know, hacktivists, and we don't look at what's going on in our own backyard, we're telling the story wrong. Right. Of course, when you start looking at things so accurate and so of the now, we knew we were going to make people angry. Um, we're dealing with a lot of very delicate, very hot button issues. And we had to say, like, honestly, you know, Arkea, Boom, and Alyssa, are we ready for the kind of splashback that we might get? And I'll never forget it. Alyssa turns to us and she says, boys, let's cause a ruckus. It might as well be tattooed on our foreheads at this point. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, uh, we are we, we were emboldened to tell a story as, uh, frankly, as complicated and as complex as we wanted it to be, which is what this volume is, because Alyssa was there to back us on. We couldn't continue this story without taking those risks. We just couldn't. We couldn't. I agree. And we're probably on every NSA watch list. <laughs> yeah, I know you're on every... I mean, for already. sure. As soon as you walk for into sure, an airport, right? you're red flagged. My, my, yeah. Google, my Google search history. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're definitely flagged, for yeah. sure. For yeah. all the articles I've sent you over the years. Yeah, like... we, we had a guy come up to us at a convention uh, in Baltimore. Yeah. A few people, actually, but one I will never forget, who bought the book, and then after he bought it, and we signed it, he, he looks he looks calling like straight in the eye. He's a tall, buff dude. Looks at him, he's like, I work for Air Force Psycom. Oh. And we were like, oh, and we were like, got it. And they were like, prove it? <laughs> and he pulls out his government ID. <laughs> and we're like, go. <laughs> cool. Is he a fan of the book? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> he hadn't read it before it he met. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, but he, he, he was like, yeah, we, you know, there are people in my office that have read it. So that's super awesome. That's it. Well, and it, it, it sort of, even though it's a comic book, it's opened up a world uh, to people that are, maybe haven't been comic book fans right, before. Right. 
um, just by the nature of what it's about. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of programmers and coders that, that were not into comic books that sort of picked this up because of, they were interested in the storytelling. Right. Um, but, you know, at the forefront, I think what, what these guys have done so well, because I what I don't want is people to go, oh, this is a story about activism and it's a story about hackers and it's a story about coding. But really, the core of this story is about uh, relationships, dynamics between relationships, and these two guys that, that are really, you know, like Colin said, two sides of the same coin. And you know, I really respect uh, everything that you guys have done and really what you're saying, mainly because a lot of people, and I'm not going to badmouth anybody, but a lot of people, a lot of actors, put their names on intellectual properties or comic books in order for them to get made into TV or films. But you actually believe in, in this story that you're telling, and it's it's your project, you know what I mean? So that's, that's great. And Boom and Archaea, they have a great, great, great track record for bringing in the hot new talent that people are looking at. That's you guys. That's you guys. That's you guys. The, the hot new talent. Yeah. Can we can we tell a fun story? So, you know, let's not name any names, but I mean, we sometimes that happens. Of course. Um, we sat down with Alyssa and first, our very first meeting from the very first moment, it was clear that she was in this for the exact right reasons. Right. She was here because she had a story that she was dying to tell that was burning up inside that she had to get out there. And we're all blessed that it was comics that she's decided to you know have this story get told there right, because we got to we got to be the guys who got to tell it like that was just very exciting for us right um and what happened that was i mean on top of the fact that we sat down that first time and within that first conversation we had a guy named ed who leaked secrets yep. because we were sitting there and going well clearly facebook and twitter are start taking your data and selling it to the government mm -hmm. like clearly like all this kind of stuff and we uh, came out of that meeting being like, well, it's interesting that she's on totally the same wavelength as us, uh, but now we're really going to have to buckle down and do our research yeah. uh, so that we're as on top of this as we can be. And we get home that day upon getting a phone call from our editor at the time, Rebecca Taylor, who'd set the meeting and worked on the first volume with us. Um, she, We get a call from her saying, uh, Alyssa loved you guys. She wants you guys to do it. And we were like, all right, sweet. We're going to do this book. We're really excited. And we get home and sitting on both of our house, uh, you know, uh, uh, front doors, our, our doorsteps, is a massive leather folio with a big metal buckle and, a, and a, a note inside that says, enjoy, Alyssa. And like, I don't know, like a hundred pages of photocopied wow. documents yeah. that had been highlighted and had been prepared for us <laughs> and were A like, little obsessive compulsive, just a little. Yeah. Just a little like, bit. But here, I mean, for me, for me, um, being in the position that I'm in, I, I am I am too uh, sure of, of myself, too uh, set in my ways to just slap my name on something and be done. Yeah. I, I have two amazing kids that I love spending time with, so if anything's going to take me away from them, I've got to feel in my heart that it's something that deserves my time and, and being away from my kids. So everything that I tell, every story that I tell, everything that I put my name on, I believe in wholeheartedly. There's Very no cool. reason for me to do it otherwise. That's Truly great. Truly no reason for me to do it otherwise. That's super respectable. But thank you guys for your time. Thank um, you. I hope the hacktivist blows, no, not blows up. That was probably the wrong choice of words. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but implodes? Implodes? Uh, uh, crashes? I hope the numbers shoot no. through the roof. We hope everyone yeah. loves it. Yes. yes. We hope <laughs> everyone <laughs> loves it. Toys, hacktivists. So go check it out. It's on, uh, it's on sale now. You can find it at, at your local comic book store support your local comic book stores like the manhattan beach comic book or uh anywhere where you buy comics so check it out comicsology comicsology so that's that's it guys thank you so much thank you hey, thank, thank you, you so much. thank you